Morning Bodgers. My name is Bodger. Some of you are new around here. Um, 150 of you all subscribed from my um, from my last video on the Blackburn Beverly. Thank you very much. There is more to come on that. Uh, myself and Aidy, who you'll meet later, uh, are going to go and give them a hand to get a disassembled, loaded up safely, and uh, then it's going to get transported over to Solway Aviation Museum. I'll leave a link in the description, and they are going to restore her, put her back together, and save her for future generations. She is the last of her kind. She is the last Blackburn Beverly. So, uh, yeah, that's coming up. But I thought what I'd do is kind of show you what I get up to when I'm not with Big Bev. Um, I volunteer at RAF Snaith Museum. Uh, we're going to have a look around, see what we've got going on here. Um, we'll take a look at our propeller and the engines that we've got and all the rest of it. And um, yeah, I thought I'd show you what goes on here. Um, because we... Uh, we are a more World War II orientated museum. Um, Arya Snaith uh, had Halifax bombers from 5-1 Squadron uh, during the war and also 150 Squadron that later moved um, to, to allow room for 5-1 to come in. 5-1 Squadron is still with us and they come down to see us uh, a couple of times a year and uh, and uh, respect those who served with them and uh, spend a bit of time here and teach the, uh, the younger generations of what their history is. Um, so what I'll do is show you some of that history. Um, the other things we do um, away from here, we do um, explores of military sites, uh, former military sites should I say, uh, former RAF bases uh, within Yorkshire and, and North Lincolnshire. Um, I'll leave links to uh, Aidy's channel uh, that you'll meet later. Aidy and I uh, both are on Blow an 8 Cylinder channel. Uh, sometimes I, I have some here with there's, um, some coal mine videos from Selby and things. But anyway, I'll leave links. Uh, all the links are going to be in the description below. Check those out. Uh, like and subscribe it helps me out greatly and uh, get some eyes on what it is I get up to so with no further ado let's take a look and in this room folks we have a propeller from a Halifax bomber which uh, ditched or was taken down into the wash in the UK during the war and uh, it's been a slow process of preserving this one. It was actually fetched up by a fishing boat uh, in its nets and um, it came and it's here now for us to look after and preserve. It's going to be mounted on the wall so everyone can see it and uh, just another one of the projects. Let's take a look at some more shall we? Of course being a museum in original buildings means we've got a lot of buildings that need restoration for us to move into eventually but uh, as you can see there's a lot of work that needs doing oh we've got ceilings that all need redoing everything's in a bit of a state but we do have a lot of space here that's one thing we're not short of So yeah, a um, lot of things to do with Diary of Snaith. Um, it's just one of many projects. Again, all original buildings, lots of room to move into as time progresses and things expand for us. It means we get to tell the stories of the men and the women who served here during the war and afterwards the Land Army girls. You know we've still got original things like the air raid shelters. This one again needs clearing out. The previous farmer that owned the land used it to have fires in and things but she'll come along with some work 
um, my son, you might see him in some of the, the videos over time, uh, Bodger Junior as I call him, he, uh, he'll he be joining the channel, but yeah, lots of buildings, some with roofs, some without, a lot of original fittings that we can use as reference. Um, yeah, seem to be lacking pieces in areas, but again, it's all work. We do need volunteers if you're in the area, or even if you're not, you just fancy coming and seeing us and spending a few hours helping us out. Do that. I'll leave links in the description of how you can contact us and come on down, join the fun. So, yeah, just thought I'd show you some of the things that we're up to, what I get up to as a person. You know, I think a lot of you have come from the Blackburn Beverly um, video I did. More buildings. So yeah, I just thought you could get to know me a bit better and see what I do. Let's take a look at some other stuff, shall we? This is the main buildings that uh, currently house the museum, RF Snare. There used to be accommodation blocks for the WAF, William, the Women's Auxiliary Air Force, that supported the RAF during the war. All these used to be bedrooms and bathrooms for the officers. This is where the prop's going on the end of this wall when we get to it. Should be quite a landmark and make it easy to see where we are. Um, take a look inside, see what we've got. So, this is RAF Snaith Museum in the Naffy. We have our own canteen here. Um, excellent cakes, highly recommended. Reasonable prices. Something that we reinstated. It's where the original Naffy was for the officers. So yeah, lots of displays, lots of information. Um, some of these was actually taken here, so these lads here are either collecting or taking their parachutes back. Nappy officer uh, with a WAP officer there. And we believe, <coughs> well, we know that this table here actually came from Snaith. Because up here, 5 1 Squadron Stars is written on the underside of it. Um, let's take another look, see what else we've got in here. We have our library. The telephones are interactive between rooms for the uh, younger visitors. And we do have quite a collection of RAF related books and things that we use for reference. But you're all welcome to come along, take a seat. And uh, have a little bit of quiet time. We have uniforms. The size of it is more like a child's. It's amazing. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? And in here we have MHJ for Jane which was Halifax HI 936 that crashed during the war and uh, she made it back here with, in parts unfortunately and up here we 
a volunteer that came and he's doing us some nose art. The sort of thing that would have been on J for J. In fact, this picture is the only one that we could actually put on anywhere because uh, most of the nose art was a little bit saucy during the time. <coughs> we are shut down at the moment so there's some stuff that isn't out. We're on display. But here we have personal items from those that served. Cigarette cases, trench art that was made during the war. Bottles and things that were found over on uh, the airfield, which is behind you. Because this is a dispersal site, so all the staff wouldn't actually be on the airfield should uh, the Germans decide to come and uh, leave some, uh, what's the word, to avoid the algorithms, some boom boom eggs. Then the staff weren't uh, on site, and then it meant that the airfield could get operational again fairly quickly. Here we have shrapnel from uh, an explosion that happened at, uh, at Snaith. Um, there was an accident at the bomb dump, killing several people. Um, quite sad, quite sad when you think about it, it was all young men. And we keep going. Up until, um, get a bit of light on my face, hi. Up until about 18 months ago, all these buildings were still able to house pigs. And through extensive hard work, we have uh, changed these rooms back to what they were. Let me show you. So this room is a slight reconstruction. We are hoping to make it more accurate because we do have photographs of George Gerard Booth. Um, he was an officer here at Snaith. And uh, although male officers weren't actually in these quarters, I feel it's important to represent those from the RAF that served here. shall continue. So in here we have 1940s everyday things, what the children would have played with, what the ladies that were left behind would have used. I'm telling the story of life back home while the lads are away fighting or, you know, try and show it, reflect the people because ultimately that's what this museum's about, it's about the people here because it's the people that made the site. Then we go into Olive's room. Now for now, Olive's room is dedicated to the land army. The land army were housed here after, um, after the war. Um, because obviously not all the men made it back so the land still needed working people still needed to eat and so it continued for a while in fact Snaith was one of the largest um, camps shall we say for the land army girls in Yorkshire from here they would go elsewhere and there's all sorts here this bike this bike represents the WAF officer that was here and um, Bomber Harris came on a visit and uh, when he did visit he needed to send a message across the base on general inspection. So he gave the message to one of the WAF officers, go take that my girl um, and I'll see you back here in 15 minutes with the reply. She came back after 20 minutes 
So Bomber Harris has to why it taking so long. I don't have a bicycle, sir. Bomber Harris wasn't happy. Next morning, down a corridor, much like this, outside one of the rooms, there was a bicycle for the young lady in question. Where he got it from, I don't know. But it's Bomb Harris. You didn't mess with him. If he wanted a bicycle for her, you got the bicycle. This is a working uniform of somebody who served in the Land Army. And the dungarees are original. There's a little fact for you. This is Diane. Diane was a, a wife officer. Where are we? Corporal Diane Charlesworth was her name. And up until recently, she was on display in another uh, museum, the one at Hendon, I believe. And uh, they rang her up and says, Do you want yourself back again? Because we're changing the displays. So she says, Yeah. I'll take it to my local area uh, museum. So Diane's joined us as well. Bit of eye candy for the boys. When she comes in, the real Diane. She's a lovely girl, lovely woman. <laughs> Obviously not wartime. And in here we have uh, the radio room. Original period Halifax bomber radio equipment, as well as other things. The other telephone that's connected to the library. And in here you get demonstrations on Morse code for the kids, and how radios work, and the communications. In fact, it's because of the radio that RAF Snaith is called RAF Snaith. Let me explain. So nearby we have RAF Pocklington and the village where this base is is called Pollington. The obvious confusion could be over the radio, which one do you land at? So they change the name to another nearby village, RAF Snaith, even though it's in Pollington. But save the confusion over the radio during the war. We have models, the kind of things that would have been found here at Snaith, including the layout of this particular site, of site 1. And this is what it looked like in 1941. We're currently here in this room. They're quite extensive buildings. So we've got a bit of room to move into. Um, yeah. Because at the moment we don't really have room for an aircraft of any description. So what we have is models to demonstrate. We do have a field down the back, but you know. And this is AD from Blown Egg Cylinder, link will be in the description. And he is about to start cleaning this little nugget. Continue cleaning. Continue cleaning. We've already removed that much sand out of it. That's a bucket full. There's about five kilograms in those buckets. Five think. kilos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, be on, be, on, be on eBay soon. eBay, yeah, yeah. Baltic sand infused with corroded Merlin. Tell us about the Merlin. Yeah. The line of. This one is actually from a Halifax bomber, HR 871, flew with the 405 Canadian uh, Pathfinder Force. And its last use was on the 2nd of August 1943, on the last of the Hamburg raids. It uh, unfortunately got struck by lightning, put out the two inner engines, the outer engines kept running, 
this is an inner engine, so this is one that stopped working. The crew ditched it, they bailed out to safety, and this just flew out over the Baltic Sea and eventually hit the water. Still with both outer engines running, and then broke up and sank to the bottom, where this engine sat upside down since that day, up until well, a couple of days ago. Yeah. Uh, seeing if it'll run, we've, we've got a spark. We managed to work, get a spark plug working. I'll leave a link to that. Uh, and yeah, now it's more a case of just get as much sand and debris out of it and give it some preserving stuff, which is uh, trying the Lanagard, which is actually a car underbody protection, but it seems to be working well on uh, on this. If you're watching from Lanagard, it could do with the sponsorship, you know what I mean? Because we're doing good work and it really works for us. So yeah, I've just dragged out the vacuum cleaner. And We'll uh, try and get some of the crap we can suck out. See the crud down there, folks. Down there. Let's try and tidy it up. So yeah, that's what we've got going on. Um, we have got a Bristol engine through there and all sorts, but I'll uh, I'll leave links to Aidy's channel because he's got more about all that sort of stuff and this. And check his uh, his channel out. And that's about it, really, bodgers. So yeah. Just thought I'd introduce myself properly to the new uh, the new subscribers. Thank you very much for subscribing. Um, that video's kind of uh, what's the word? Gone to your head. Gone to my head. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. In the slightest. No, I'm quite surprised, really. Yeah. Usually my views are like hundred, and it's gone up to we're just touching thirty thousand nearly. Yeah. So yeah. So I just thought I'd show you what we get up to, what I get up to. Um, when I'm not over at Fort Paul. So yeah, there we go. So it's goodbye from me, and it's um, goodbye from him. Goodbye from him, exactly. And I'll uh, I'll see you next week. Catch you on the next one. <laughs>